people have a poor perception of the military in general. But why do you think that is? Where is that poor perception coming from? See, I think I know exactly why the military is shrinking. Guys, we're closing out the summer season with an epic giveaway called the Summer Line. Summer Shutdown Super Shooter Giveaway. Summer Shutdown Super Shooter Giveaway. All you guys have to do is click down below this video. There's a link. It's going to take you to a landing page. If you give us just a little bit of information, you may be the winner of our grand prize. A Molly double belt rig, our new adjustable WPS rifle sling, a stock sock rifle attachment, our packy sack grab and go bag, and our latest snapback. It's all that stuff, which I totally didn't read while we were off camera. Check down below in the link. Enter to win and enjoy this video. What's happening, my friends? John Lovell, Warrior Poet Society. Today, we're talking about how our U.S. military is shrinking. That's right. All the different branches of our military are struggling to meet minimum quotas. Recruiters are offering massive bonuses, more than ever before, just to please, please sign up. And furthermore, they're really trying to capitalize on social media, Twitter, Instagram, all those kind of big tech oligarchs that hate us, trying to leverage that to get more recruits because people just aren't signing up. Up. Now, as I'm diving into this subject to figure out what in the world's going on, I checked out some of the mainstream media to find out that they're just completely misdiagnosing the problem, in my opinion. Warrior Post Society, we're a veteran-owned and operated company. We employ multiple different veterans in our training company, and all of our kind of industry friends here in the gun world, uh, well, we know something about the military and we stay very, very close to it. However, what I see in the mainstream media is a misdiagnosing of the problem and applying the wrong solutions. They're saying, hey, parents really just want their kids to be in college, for example, as if that hasn't always been true. Or, hey, maybe it's COVID challenges as recruiters can't meet face to face with people. I'm like, all right. Or perhaps it's people have a poor perception of the military in general. I'd say, absolutely, that is definitely one of them. But why do you think that is? Where is that poor perception coming from? See, I think I know exactly why the military is shrinking. At least here's four major reasons why. First and foremost, there's a narrative pushed by academia, through the mainstream media, through political channels, that America is evil. And if America is evil, the young recruit and the young soldiers faced with the idyllic problem of, well, why would I die for a country that's evil? And that's really a catch-22. You're asking somebody to die for an ideal that they don't actually hold. Of course, military would suffer from that. Of course, people aren't gonna wanna sign up to suffer and potentially die for a country that they think is evil. There's cost to America bashing. And when patriotism dies, you can't expect to have a full, thriving, able-bodied military. The second reason why the military is shrinking, get vaccinated or you're fired, or you're not admitted in the first place. Multiple times over the last few months, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering about three times just recently where young folks will come up to me and be like, hey, John, I'm thinking about joining the military. I wanna be an army ranger. I'm like, hey, way to go, army rangers, rangers lead the way. But I'll say, hey, are you vaccinated? And these particular people said, no, I'm not. I'm like, all right, well, very well. Are you willing to get vaccinated? And they said, no, I'm, I'm not. And I said, well, then it's a, the issue is completely moot. If you won't get vaccinated, you're not able to join the military. They're kicking dudes out. Right now we have instructors, former vets on staff that literally ran into our employment because they wouldn't get vaccinated. A lot of our special operations community, some of them have just completely hit the deck and got chaptered out of the military or, or faced incredible pressure and difficulty because they refuse to be vaccinated. And again, don't, don't say I'm making a stand one way or the other. I'm just saying, hey, these type of folks are operate by a certain ideal, right? That's why you join the military is because you're valuing your ideal of loving country and other people more than you love your own life, for instance. Well, that kind of idealism isn't bullied so easily. So if you force a vaccination, they'll just say, hey, I'm not gonna do it. I said, I'm not gonna do it. And then they won't. You face them with no option other than to just get out of the military. So the vaccine policy absolutely has caused a shrinking in the military and it's absolutely hurting recruitment. Now, third reason why our American military is shrinking, it's because young soldiers join to play war games not woke games. And so when you abscond the United States military and you use your command structure to play sociological games that the progressives 
don't realize these have never been tried before. You're undermining a meritocracy with this kind of everyone gets an equal outcome, this inclusiveness policy. Well, that's antithetical to a meritocracy. Daily Wire recently reported on some of these woke games. There was an Air Force drag show in Woke Diversity Festival at Langley. If you jump over to the Marines or the Air Force or the National Guard social media pages, you'll see that they joined proudly in the Pride Month celebrating LGBTQ stuff. I personally got in a little fight with the National Guard over this instance where they doubled down on the Pride Month thing. I want you to see my dialogue. I'll read it to you here. They put a picture of a young specialist. It says, Pride Month shows how far we've come in the past decade. In the beginning, I was nervous to let others know that I'm a lesbian. That was until I shipped to basic training and met a fellow lesbian drill sergeant. Seeing an out and proud gay woman in that role was very empowering for me as a closeted 18 year old. I want to be that person for other LGBT TQ plus soldiers. Now I ended up responding to the National Guard and then they responded back. Here's their response. They said, we know we sit on the shoulders of giants. That walk happens daily. Simultaneously is an Instagram post that celebrates some of the soldiers in our ranks. Hey, why not celebrate soldiers in our ranks? What's so wrong with this post, you might ask? I responded to the National Guard that none of those military giants focused on the private sexual preferences of their soldiers. Celebrating soldiers for soldiering is nice. Do that. And you do that by giving medals when they do good military stuff. The system already has ways of celebrating and recognizing. Celebrating a soldier because they do gay stuff is offensive and wildly off course for our nation's military. Return to your former glory, please. That's just one man's opinion. Hey, heterosexual, homosexual, I need you guys ready to protect against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That's what I need you to do. I need you to be ready to stop bad people with guns. I need you at a heightened sense of military readiness. Then the sexual preferences of the soldiers in your ranks should be irrelevant, not a grounds for praising somebody. Military is a meritocracy. Do good military stuff, get military awards. That's the praise. And that's the problem here as we play these woke military games. Why can't the military just do military? So why can't we just be the military? Oh, it's because woke left progressives want to push their agenda forcefully. And they're using social media channels primarily to do that. But they're also being forced to attend all these inclusivity kind of things, which I think does a great at, at best it's a millet. It's a distraction against what military people really should be doing. At worst, it's undermining the very fabric. You're playing woke games when you should be focused on war games. The fourth and final reason I'll give you why the military is shrinking. This one may hurt just a little bit, but when have I ever shied away from saying anything that I think? It's why you love me or you hate me in the comments. No one's kind of in between on this guy. I get it, I get it. Anyway, let me draw fire, here we go. Army Chief of Staff General James McConville testified before Congress that only 23% of Americans aged 17 to 24 years old were qualified to serve without a waiver, down from 29%. That's a 6% drop in just a couple years. This primarily boils down to obesity, drug use, or a criminal record. The amount of people even eligible to join the military is retracting year over year after year as we're just glued into our screens, our video games, our TV shows, and our nonstop Skinner box loop of social media instant gratification that we have become fat and lazy and apathetic. Couple that with the victimhood culture that seems to be rising up from the ground all the time, we're becoming weaker and weaker as a society. Check this out. A DOD, D Department of Defense survey, found recently that 57% of all young respondents believe that joining the military would leave them physically, psychologically, and emotionally broken after serving. Now, if like, yeah, you're gonna get some PTSD stuff, and well, I got some, you know, bugs and whatnot, and yeah, you get hurt, but guess what? Life hurts you too. And I don't question for a moment that 57% of respondents have that level of just terrified. It's not that they'll be injured, it's that they'll be broken by it. And you know, in our incessant snowflake, I'm injured and offended by everything kind of culture, I bet that stat is absolutely true. We're not only getting fatter, we're getting mentally, spiritually weaker as a society. 
Guys, this was the four reasons why our military is hemorrhaging. It's a really, really bad sign, and it's indicative of the decline of culture. It's indicative of authoritarianism, which is creeping up insidiously into our institutions of power, and we need to talk about it absolutely. Did I miss anything, guys? I want to see in the comments what you guys think. If you disagreed with something, I don't have to tell you to let me have it. You guys are already just all caps of luck. John, you're terrible. Maybe so. It remains to be seen. Check out the comments. Guys, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. We really appreciate that. Like, comment, share, because Big Tech is not helping us grow. If you would like to support us, consider shopping warriorpoetsociety.com. We have all kinds of stuff that helps you support us, and consider joining our Warrior Poet Society network at watchwpsn.com. We appreciate you guys. We love you. Warrior poets were forces for good in a broken world and I love you for it. Train hard, train smart, stay free. I'm gonna show you how to devastatingly deliver an impact to a person who's out of your reach. So if I have this as a tool in my toolbox, and the opportunity arises, then I have a second to decide whether or not I can take him to church. So this is a level three hard plate, and my knife just went right through it.